Well, now to America's third war, the war on drugs in Mexico. Today we look at how these drugs make it to our streets and how U.S. citizens fuel this problem. William Lajeunesse is in San Ysidro, California. William? Well, Jenna, you know, it's easy to point fingers and pass judgment on Mexico for the violence in that country. But their war is our war because of the money that 21 million Americans will pay to get their illegal drugs past that fence. The only way Mexico will regain their security and get away from such lawless behavior is to take the money out of this whole illegal drug market. And it's our money. We should be ashamed of ourselves. It's Mexico's war, but Americans pay for it. Anybody that's buying narcotics is financing that effort. Heroin, methamphetamine, marijuana, and cocaine all originate from or transit through Mexico. The U.S.-Mexican border is but one hurdle for the cartels, one step in a long but profitable journey that fuels the violence in Mexico. Take a single kilo of cocaine. It originates as a coca plant in Peru, Bolivia, or Colombia. Price to the farmer, about $1,000 a kilo. Flown to Colombia, it doubles in price as it's processed into powder. From there, it travels by plane, truck, or submarine to Mexico, where the price jumps to $10,000 a kilo. Now the difficult leg, crossing over or under the U.S. border. Stuffed in cars, smuggled by illegal immigrants, a kilo north of the fence triples in price to $30,000. It gets them additional narcotics, it gets them transportation cells, it gets them weapons. It gets them information. Distributed to street gangs in L.A. and New York, where it is cut and sold to U.S. consumers by the gram, just over two pounds of pure cocaine is worth $174,000. We're the ones that arrogantly look at Mexico and tell them, you should do more to resolve our drug problem, and that's stupid. Now, drug seizures are up about 40% in the last five years, but demand here in the United States, which is the driver of the instability there, Jenna, that is not going down, and that's why many argue that the blood in Mexico is actually on our hands. Back to you. Interesting to see that route. William Lajeunesse, thank you very much.